<laughs> yeah, YouTube family, the mafia killer this space again. Best and most credible opinion, fear and fearless analysis. Look here. Another topical issue catch the attention of the Maverick again. The Minister of Justice made an announcement recently, say, the government is going to officially ban corporal punishment. That way, parents beat them pick me. Me didn't think it ban already, you know, official. Me think it on the books already, you know. Apparently, you now the mag a plan to put the, the law in place so that children can officially report parents to the police when them physically hit them. Not abuse them, you know, but physically hit them. I'm here, the minister try to pass it some theory. You know, so sometimes when I hear some of them Jamaican officials that talk, government officials and lawmakers talk, I don't think they might talk out of their own conviction or out of their own personally studied opinion. A lot of our policies and a lot of our opinions by our leaders shaped by international international power, international practices, you know. I mean, I just think that one, one of them. Because they look up flimsy foolishness when me hear Mr. Chuck uh, I try to use to justify and uh, hold the alternative punishment for children. L listen to some of the comments from Mr. Chuck. Listen to him. Every parent must learn to school the child, even to deprive the child of some form of activity or to put them in the corner to stand up. And I know it's difficult. It's difficult for parents to really, you know, challenge their children to be on the right path. But I dare say that corporal punishment really works. If you know of any parent who is beating their child, you tell them that the government and the Minister of Justice say it is wrong. In other words, we must not use straps and whips and belts, especially belt buckles, <laughs> to beat any child. <laughs> you see what I mean? But belt buckle. Belt buckle to your children a, a physical assault. Then the people who go to prison. Remember, make a distinction early in the conversation. Abuse is different from scolding a child, you know. Maybe feel a lot of the people are, are interchange abuse with scolding. Personally, me think the scolding of children is necessary. How do we grow up as children? No, for we have children now. Now, if you, when people push that from scolding now, you know, the physical abuse now, you know. That is something that should be answerable to the law. Because remember, say assault, physical assault, they on the books as assault. You know. So some of them pick the, some of them parents will really beat the pity them to a pulp till them are bleed and all them something. A prison them people have to go. But don't tell me, say, me can't tap my daughter upon her hand. Or if me have a son, me can't hold him and drape him and say, where you do? And them kind of company that you keep. A gunman you got to turn. Eh? Me must just talk to him. No, we don't buy that something to people. And it's a year, it's a year after year after year debate and a question. The generation before, who used to get actual scolding, are they worse off than the generation now? Who the narrative now is anti scolding? Me don't, me don't necessarily believe so. Me don't think so. No, for we will grow up as bad behaving youth. No says schooling help keep you in line and help save no for we from prison and help save no for we life. No for we. Scolding. That's the same fear of being scolded there. And the message that some harsh scolding. We have to be things, you know. Strappings over your back, you know. No for we. We life, our path. They were decided by some of them scolding the way we get. We are talking a positive sense, you know. So this thing where we are interchange scolding with physical abuse, we will stop it. Because there's a distinction to be made. Now, another danger of this fall of fashion, I'm law where we have to put for the books now. We don't care to talk to the youth, they're already, you know. Even before the law you put in place, you know. 
I have some other reason about it with you. And I say, when you don't feel Pitney get up a beat now, you know. Pitney used to get more beaten. Before, nowadays, if a parent or a father or a mother talk too loud to them Pitney, the Pitney drape them and I'll box them to them face. I want to do that. When I look at Mr. Chuck at that, I say, Mr. Chuck, he, he just looks so out of touch. And just a panda to, to whoever. They might carry the latest pan angle for some contribution and some donation. You know. No conviction, no thought, no, no going to our policy making. We tailor our policy to our culture. And when we look on the kind of youth, them, where this kind of policy has spit out in the world, in some other jurisdiction, you know. Let me tell you one of the biggest dangers of this kind of policy. You see the youth, them, they don't learn a thing named consequences for actions. Me and Mr. Chuck also are opposite other ways to punish children. And you know, so the only other way them can come up with this, we take away things from them with them like. But here, me I go ask Mr. Chuck, a poor mother in the garrison, we have grown up four youth. Eh? What, you, what, what a poor mother they have for the youth except him dinner, where she can't take away from him, for punish him. Eh? You think she can't take away? What she can't take away from him? Take away him shoes or him pants or him. She can't afford to buy the latest iPhone, you know. So he may have no iPhone to take away. Where are you going to take away from a poor youth where you, you barely have nothing to give to? More than when he look like he's going to go straight. And he's going to go down the wrong path. You hold him and give him a good drape and a good shake. You know, there's a drape and shake and slap on the hand, me go. Me don't even have a belt buckle and belt, you know. But as it is now, if you do so, smack your, your, your son from him hand. And smack your daughter and say, no, what you do that so wrong? She can call the police for you and you're there prison. And right now, if a, if a father school him, son or him daughter now, and you know kids, especially teenage kids, are very manipulative. You know? And they feel like they're smarter than everybody in the world. In fact, and in many cases, they are pretty smart, you know. They are smarter than kids of 14 and 15, two or three generations ago. Now, when they become aware of this legislation or how much a legislation of them back, this basically gives them the freedom to do whatever they want to do without consequences, you know. This notion of finding other ways to punish children, you know, have struggle for it. You can't allow scolding, but you don't allow abuse because there's a thin line no, well, there's a not so thin line between scolding a child and abusing a child. Uh, anybody who does self righteous and hypocritical knows that when we are picnic, we do something where we deserve to get all some flagging for. A joke, a, a fire on a ramp with. We are going to produce a generation of, of kids who feel entitled to anything they want to do, wrong or right, no moral compass. And them do what them do without consequence. That me I make you know. And you see, anytime you dare to take away anything from them when them don't want, them are go to them are go to some lethal extremes. Follow the case in America. Follow them youth, they will jump out and do some crazy out of work thing. Just some little youth will probably a girl reject him, you know. Or a teacher talk to her to him at school, you know. And what the result for them? Go down at the gun shop and go back up at the school. Think about these things. And that kind of generation there. We are going to start producing at Jamaica. Maverick has skip way. Skip way. Watch it skip now, man. Maverick has skip way. What me say? <laughs> Talk to me good now, man. Boom.